Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Emissions Sharing Webinar, where we share about the holistic NUS education, vibrant campus life, and myriad opportunities that will prepare you beyond academics and be future ready. I'm YJ, and I will be your MC for today. Thank you for taking time to join us. The sharing you will hear this morning will be presented by the Vice Dean of Emissions, Associate Professor Terence Sim. Following his presentation, there will be a QA and a segment and we have specially invited two NUS students to share their experiences. If you have any questions, we greatly appreciate if you could please write them down in the Q&A tab and we will answer them during the Q&A segment. Thank you for your patience. To begin the session, I would like to introduce our speaker. Professor Terence Sim is the Vice Dean of Admissions and an Associate Professor at the School of Computing, National University of Singapore. He's also a Principal Investigator at NUS Central for Research in Privacy Technologies and Crypt. As a computer scientist, Prof Sim conducts research in biometrics, computer vision, and their privacy implications. Prof Sim is often quoted by the, by the press for his research expertise. He received his bachelor's degree from MIT in 1990, master's degree from Stanford in 1991, and PhD degree from Carnegie Mellon University in 2002. As a Singaporean, he hopes to inspire more locals to pursue research and development careers. Now may I invite Prof Sim, who will provide an overview of the interdisciplinary opportunities and the vibrant collegiate campus experiences that you will look, you can look forward to at NUS. Prof Sim, please. Thank you. Thank you, Yuetia, for that introduction. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can see and hear me. Uh, I'm really happy to be meeting you this morning uh, and to share with you uh, exciting things that are happening uh, at NUS. So give me a minute while I share my screen. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me share this one. Okay. All right. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. So, uh, okay, let's begin. So, uh, this is my agenda for today. Uh, quite a lot to go through. But, uh, and then after that, we'll have uh, Q&A, right? But as you can see, the Q&A is already open, so you can begin typing your questions. Uh, a very quick introduction of uh, NUS. Uh, most of you may have heard of us. NUS is Singapore's first and largest university, right? We have trained generations of architects, doctors, engineers, entrepreneurs, and, and pretty much many, many professions. So this also means that we have the largest alumni network, okay? And that is something going to be very useful when you graduate and you become an alumni yourself. You, you can tap onto this network, okay? In terms of numbers, here are some numbers for you to take note. Uh, perhaps the important ones are the ones in yellow. Uh, on the left, uh, we are ranked eighth in the world. Uh, we've been at this position for a few years now, and we really hope to maintain it for as long as possible. Okay, the other important number is the number on the right, top 10 for global employability. What this means is that an NUS degree is recognized pretty much throughout the world. Okay, we have alum working in major cities all over the world uh, and they can share with you the experience, but also companies worldwide recognize us, they know us and they will hire you once you have an NUS degree. Okay, so this is something very, very useful. Besides just being ranked eight overall, we are also very well ranked in 19 subjects, right? In these 19 subjects, we are among the global top 10. So you can take a quick look here, uh, literally from A to Z. Well, in this case, A to S. So with architecture, business, chemistry, going down to geography, history, mathematics, and so on. Right, so we are doing really, really well uh, in many of these subjects. Okay, okay, let's jump straight into academics. Okay, uh, in case you're not familiar, this is the NUS academic year. Okay, we start uh, in mid-August 
actually very soon, right after the National Day. Uh, and that will be our first semester. It takes us to about early December. And then we have a short five-week vacation over the Christmas New Year period. And then we resume uh, the semester. Semester two will start in early January. Okay, uh, That goes on until early May. And then we have what is called the long vacation or, or summer vacation. Right, So that's the academic calendar that we follow, except for dentistry and medicine, which operates on a slightly different calendar. Okay, uh, This slide shows you all our undergraduate degree programs. Okay? NUS is a full university, right? Uh, we're not just an engineering school or a business school. We offer many, many degree programs. So you can take a look here. The biggest block is the uh, blue block on the left uh, offered by the College of Humanities and Sciences. This is where you have all your arts and social science disciplines, for example, anthropology, economics, English literature, history, geography, psychology, social work, etc. Okay, that's your traditional FASS, right? Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Uh, and then majors in science, okay? Your chemistry, biology, which is called life sciences, mathematics, physics, uh, pharmaceutical science, and so on. They're all under this college as well. And then we have a few cross-disciplinary programs such as data science and economics, uh, environmental studies, PPE. Okay, so that's the biggest block. The next biggest block will be the design and engineering, College of Design and Engineering, where you have your disciplines such as architecture, industrial design, uh, electrical, civil, chemical engineering, and so on. Okay, so if you're interested in that, please uh, pay attention to this uh, college. Uh, they may some of these uh, colleges will be running their own special session either today or next week. So please look out for those events. Okay, uh, we have the School of Business, uh, which is offering one major now, but nine sorry one degree. I uh, beg your pardon, one degree with nine majors. Okay, the nine majors are listed here: accountancy, applied business analytics, economics, etc. Okay. Uh, and then below that is uh, the School of Computing, where I'm from also. I'm an associate professor there, and I do teach there. Uh, School of Computing offers four degree programs, uh, as shown here, Business Analytics, the flagship program of Computer Science, and so on. Okay? And not forgetting our traditional uh, professional uh, degrees, such as Dentistry, Law, Medicine. Okay? We do have Music, Nursing, and Pharmacy to complete the list here. So pretty much many, many disciplines, pretty much you can probably find something uh, for your interest. Okay. All right. So to give you a bit more information, uh, pretty much whatever degree you take in NUS, it will take you four years. And over the four years, you will be completing 40, four zero courses in total, divided into three baskets as shown here. All right in green, in blue, and in the beige, okay? The green basket, which is the major requirements, this is where you spend most of your time, okay? And I'll give you an example in the next slide. This is where you spend most of your time because this will be your primary major, okay? We also have the common curriculum because we believe in equipping you with some interdisciplinary broad-based training, okay? And the reasons for that, I'll get into in a minute. And then last but not least, the third basket will be unrestricted electives. This is where you can take any course offered by NUS. Okay, a course from a different faculty of different major, uh, as long as you're interested and it's offered and you fulfill the prerequisites, you are eligible for it. Okay, so here is a concrete example of what I'm talking about. Suppose you're majoring in food science and technology. And yes, we do have such a major, food science and technology. Uh, you don't always eat in this major. Uh, you do learn important things like food quality assurance and control, introduction to human nutrition, the science and technology of foods, etc. Okay, so these are the courses you will take in your major. Okay, coming down to the blue box, which is your common curriculum, you will be required to take courses outside your discipline, such as writing. Everybody needs to know how to write. Writing skills are important. So is design thinking skills. So is AI, artificial intelligence and digital literacy. 
Okay, so AI is a tool now in in every discipline. Okay, never mind uh, what industry you're in, AI will be used. All right, so we need to expose all our students to some concepts of AI, how it works, uh, and the kind of tools that are available for you. Okay, uh, and then uh, the bottom box, the uh, beige colored box, that's your unrestricted electives. Uh, I've listed three here. Uh, you can take uh, forensic science if you're interested in that, okay? Or if you're curious about pirates, oceans, and the maritime world, wow, there's a course in that. Okay, in fact, makes me wish I was an undergrad all over again. I, I would like to sit in on this course. Uh, maybe I'll get crash. Huh? I'll just inform the, the lecturer. Uh, or if you're interested in uh, ethics, morality, and society, we have a course uh, for you as well. Okay, so this is a snapshot of uh, an example of, of, of the three baskets of courses that you'll be taking. All right. Now, because of this structure, you actually have a lot of flexibility. Okay, as this slide illustrates. Okay, so if you want to do a single major, okay, there'll be the two columns on the left. Uh, this is what it might look like, okay? The first column is your traditional university requirements, college or faculty requirements, your primary major, and then you can take unrestricted electives, okay? Or you can use your unrestricted electives to go deeper into your primary major, okay? That's fine. For students who want to go deep into your discipline, this is how you can do it. You can use your unrestricted electives, okay? Alternatively, you can use the unrestricted electives to do a second major. Okay, so this is the middle column here. This is what we call a double major. Okay, um, and the difference between a double major and a single major is that you, you essentially uh, do a lot of courses in another discipline. Okay, and pretty much you can design your own second major. Okay, or you can go into uh, minors. Okay, so the last two columns you can do one minus or two minus, and the difference between a minor and a major is just the number of courses you need to fulfill, okay? Minus typically is half that of a second major, all right? So this is a flexibility that will suit each and every one of you, right? Because you can tailor your curriculum, okay? Whether you want to go deep or you want to go broad, okay? Okay, so let me quickly talk about what's new at NUS, okay? And uh, why do we do that? Uh, we do that because really um, the, the demands of the workplace uh, uh, are changing, okay? We're into industry 4.0. You may have heard of this term, uh, which is characterized by VUCA, right? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, okay? Faced with such a, a dynamic and fluid world, um, you'll find that uh, the half cycle of knowledge and skills, uh, there'll be a rapid turnover of that, okay? And 44% of workers' core skills are expected to change in the next five years. So in other words, in other words, you have to be prepared to face change, to adapt to changing uh, job scopes, uh, and perhaps you, you might be moving from one career to the next, okay? So keeping this in mind, we have um, refreshed our curriculum over the last five years, okay? And we've touched on every aspect of the curriculum from general education to all the various faculties and colleges, okay? So you can see on this chart, uh, in this chart, sorry, that all this academic refresh has occurred starting five years ago and it has been completed. So in other words, when you join NUS um, this year or next, okay, then you'll be benefit from all these uh, fresh academic uh, design, okay? But what's really new, what's really new, which we will start in AY 2024, aka next month, is the non-academic curriculum, okay? Uh, which is where we look at your out-of-classroom experience, your student and residential life, your experiential learning, so on and so forth, okay? And the goal, um, there, there are three parts to this, okay? The first part is to help you transition to university life. Okay? Because we recognize that for many students, there is a big jump from your high school okay, to college, to university. Okay? And we want to help students manage that transition 
uh, more smoothly. Okay, so there will be exploratory courses. There'll be things that we, uh, in fact, there'll be some mandatory things that you have to do here. Uh, things like self awareness and so on, right? So that you understand, uh, what makes you take, what you like, what you cannot handle, and so on. Okay, number two, uh, we have this NUS one roadmap. Okay, like I said, this is a specially curated roadmap that will cover four years uh, and will provide a guidance for you in how you should take advantage of university life. And then thirdly, we hope that you embark on a journey of self-discovery and development. Okay, uh, this next slide uh, is more complicated. There's lots of things happening. Suffice to say that uh, these, this is a roadmap generally of the entire four years of your NUS journey. Okay, so as I said before, there is the introductory, uh, uh, some activities here to ease you into university life. And then in your second year and beyond, uh, there's participatory capacity building and contributory activities. These, these, are not, these are not academic courses, right? They are not exams, okay? But these are your CCAs, for example, uh, programs for leadership, right? Community service. These are things meant to be out of the classroom that will help nurture and, and, and train you in the soft skills, okay? So this is coming your way and this is very new and we are very, very pleased to be rolling this up, okay? So you can look forward to that. Now, in terms of other strengths, we do have your traditional uh, uh, student exchange, student exchange program, which is the SA SEP, but you can go for shorter ones such as the summer and winter programs that that happen over summer or winter, which is typically just a month long, right? Uh, there are study trips, there are short-term impact experience and so on. And if you're interested uh, in entrepreneurship, in a startup, we have this very unique thing called the NUS Overseas Colleges or NOC. Okay, let me elaborate on that, uh, which is this slide here. Okay, the uh, NOC, uh, Basically, you spend up to one year in one of these 20 locations worldwide, okay, as listed here, okay? Uh, the goal is not so much to take classes, although you can do that. The goal of NEC is to, NOC, sorry, the goal of NOC is to be attached to a startup company. Okay, so for example, a popular spot would be Silicon Valley in the US, okay? You will go there and join a startup Okay, NUS will partner you with a startup company and you live and work with them. So you can experience what it's like to be in a startup, running the company, um, all kinds of things that are involved in operating a startup. Okay, and in the evening, if you have the energy and the interest, you can still take courses at Stanford University, right? So at each of these 20 locations, we have partnered with the famous... Uh, local university there. So for example, in uh, China, we're partnered with Beta. Okay, so that's how it works. But the primary goal of this is for a startup uh, experience. And this has been going on for 20 years now and very, very well received. Okay, now coming back to other plentiful opportunities, we have over 200 student-run clubs, societies, and interest groups, okay, ranging from music, arts, performing arts, culture, to interest groups. You can find all kinds of special interest groups. Uh, in fact, for example, there's one about ethical hacking, okay, uh, that, that you can join. Uh, or you believe in community service, giving back to society. Uh, there are student groups doing that as well. Or if you're into sports, various kinds of uh, sports, okay, uh, shown here is basketball, but pretty much uh, many, many sports, uh, including sea activities, shooting, archery, and so on. Okay, so plenty for you to choose from. All right. Uh, you may also be wondering about residential living. Uh, we have a number of uh, ways for you to stay on campus. Six halls of residence. Uh, these are your traditional hostels. You might have heard of this word. Hostels, okay, those are your six halls of residence. And later on, one of our student ambassadors 
uh, can share his experience about living in one of these. Okay, And then we have four residential colleges. Um, that's a different character. Uh, and then we also have three houses. Okay, It's a little bit confusing, but let me summarize it uh, by saying that all these different choices differ uh, in the character. Each house has a specific theme or, or, or idea that they champion. Okay, uh, Some places require a meal plan, some don't. Okay, uh, Some have academic classes in the evenings uh, in smaller groups happening at where you live. Uh, some require CCA and some uh, do not. Okay, so really, uh, there's something to suit everyone. Okay, so consider that. Consider living on campus for um, you know, one year. Okay, I think uh, later on when the uh, when I ask the SA to share with you, I think you would see the benefits that can come from living on campus. Okay, so let me quickly move to um, the nitty gritty which is the application, right? Now, how would you begin this exciting journey? Well, it begins with applying. Step one, apply to be admitted to NUS, okay? Now, the majority of the audience here today uh, will have the A-levels, will be taking the uh, Singapore GC A-levels, but uh, in the interest of uh, being complete, I'll talk about the other uh, qualifications as well. So for qualifications offered in Singapore, NUS accepts the Singapore Cambridge A-levels. Uh, if you come from Polytechnic, uh, we accept your diploma as well, or you can be taking the IB or even NUS High School, okay? So these are the Singapore-based uh, qualifications, all right? Um, other accepted qualifications, um, we do have a lot of international students um, in NUS and in the audience here as well. So these are the qualifications. International A-levels, SAT, AP, uh, Gao Kao, the Hong Kong Diploma, Taiwan Senior High School, uh, Indian Standard 12, from Malaysia, UEC and STPM, from Indonesia, the Ujian National, uh, Vietnam High School, uh, Thai, Matayong 8, uh, American, Canadian, Australian high school, French, Italian, and European bac baccalaureate, and many, many more, right? So um, we do uh, accept a wide variety of qualifications, okay? Now, I need to emphasize that admissions is uh, holistic. More and more, we are moving towards holistic assessment, okay? So that means we are assessing you not just based on your high school scores or your exam scores, but also uh, non-academic things like leadership, your CCA, uh, other things that you've done outside of the classroom, okay? Um, you might have heard uh, of uh, aptitude-based admissions, which I'll get to in a minute. The other important thing that you should know when you apply is uh, the subject prerequisites. So these are some, some examples here, okay? This is uh, for the A-levels. So, um, for instance, for law, if you're interested in applying for law, then your A-level uh, prereqs must be this, okay? At least a B in GP or a good pass in H2 knowledge inquiry, okay? Or an SAT reading and writing score of at least 700 and an E for your GP and KI, okay? And also take note that there will be a selection or interview test uh, when you apply to law. The law faculty will contact you and arrange uh, such an interview with you, okay? On the other hand, if you're applying to computer science, these are your subject prerequis prerequisites, H2 pass in computing, mathematics further, mathematics or physics, and so on. And there is no interview, okay? So uh, go to the link shown here, okay? Go to our webpage where all the uh, subject prerequisites are listed. Okay, so you might want to uh, pay attention to that okay, for, for your majors that you wish to apply. Okay, the other thing you should also look out for is the indicative grade profile. Okay, so what is this? Uh, indicative grade profile is um, a representative grade of the last year's, last year's member, last year's intake. 
Okay, so for example, if you look at the first row, law, the 10th percentile, in other words, all the students admitted, okay, into law at the 10th percentile, what is their A-level grade? Okay, um, straight A's, okay? Uh, so law is very competitive. In other words, very hard to get in, okay? Uh, even the so-called weakest uh, student who got in is a straight A student, okay? Likewise for computer science, okay? For architecture, uh, it's a little bit uh, less uh, demanding for the 10th percentile. The 90th percentile is still straight A's, okay? Uh, and so you can, you can see the 10th percentile. Uh, so that's just an indication of what happened last year, okay? And the IGP, this great profile, will change from year to year, okay? So this year, it will be different uh, because of supply and demand, okay? But this gives you a sense of where you stand uh, if you were to apply, okay? Now, this is not a minimum requirement, okay? Uh, because some students mistakenly think that as long as I make this, I'm guaranteed a place. Uh, no, that's not how it works. This is just an indication of what happened last year. It doesn't guarantee anything. This year, the 10 percentile rates may be lower, may be higher, but it, it will be roughly there in the ballpark. Okay? So this is just for you to gauge where you stand. Okay? So not to worry if you are slightly below what is shown here uh, because you'll be automatically considered for aptitude-based admissions, what we call ABA. Okay, what is this? This is a holistic approach, okay, where we look at your other factors such as your interests, your prior preparation, your aptitude. Okay, so examples of uh, achievements and please tell us about your achievements. You've won any medals, you have won any competitions, you have represented Singapore in arts, sports competition. You have held key leadership positions okay, in your CCA or even in your community service outside of school. Tell us about it. We want to know that. Okay? That gives you an edge over another applicant that does not have this. Okay, So um, we also require you to answer five short response questions. These are the five. Okay, look, let's look at the first question. Tell us something you have done outside your school curriculum to prepare yourself for your chosen degree programs. For example, any relevant part-time jobs or online courses that you might have taken. Okay, so if you have done that, please talk about it in this, in this, uh, in this field here. Okay, you have up to 550 characters, roughly 100 words. Okay. Or you look at the second question. Tell us about the time when you failed to do something on your first try, but succeeded on subsequent attempts. How did you learn from your initial failure, change your approach so that you eventually succeeded? Okay, so we want to hear more from you, how you overcame some kind of failure or setback. Okay, so show, showcase your aptitude, your passion and your interest. All right, this is important. This will make you stand out from your fellow applicant okay so in summary in summary if i were to just you know conclude this presentation and that will be with this sentence your nus education is customizable challenging and contemporary in other words you have to take charge of your educational journey all right okay and with that i come to the end of uh, my presentation and uh, over Back to you, uh, Yue Chia. Thank you, Prof. Sim, for your sharing. We will now move on to the Q&A segment, and we have especially invited two NUS current students, Nicholas Sher and Ruben Quick, to join the, the session. Nicholas is a third-year student at the College of Design and Engineering, NUS, majoring in Project and Facilities Management and an alumnus from Milner Institute. In addition to his major, Nicholas is pursuing two minors, one in Entrepreneurship and another in Management. Nicholas is also a recipient of the prestigious SGIS Midterm Scholarship from CPG Corporation. He's deeply involved in campus life at NUS serving as an 
Office of Admissions Student Ambassador and taking the lead as Head Wellness Ambassador for the College of Design and Engineering. In these roles, Nicholas organizes events aimed at promoting student well-being and fostering a supportive community spirit. Outside of academics, Nicholas thrives on physical challenges, regularly participating in Spartan races and various submarathons throughout the year. Last semester, Nicholas took part in a local exchange program at SMU while balancing his coursework at NUS. On top of that, Nicholas has a commitment to sustainability and innovation as he won the SG Finn Fidelity Sustainability Competition last semester. Nicholas recently completed a rewarding internship at LHN Group as an operations intern, where he made meaningful contributions to improving organizational efficiency. Looking ahead, Nicholas is excited about furthering his studies and exploring for opportunities that allow him to apply his knowledge of project management and sustainability to real-world challenges. Luben is a third-year student majoring in pharmaceutical science with a major in life sciences and is an alumnus from St. Andrews Junior College. He stayed in Raffles Hall in his first two years of university. His main responsibility being the vice head of the Hall's music band, while also participating in his Hall's root relay and ultimate frisbee activities. He took on the position of vice house lead head of the NUS Pharmaceutical Society in his second year, planning house events for pharmacy, pharmaceutical science students. To explore career prospects in the pharmaceutical industry, Ruben is currently undergoing an internship under GSK as a quality assurance intern during his summer vacation. He will be starting a research internship at ASTAS Genome Institute of Singapore, GIS, during his second semester of his third year to explore what a research career entails. I will now hand the time over to Prof Sim, who will be moderating the Q&A session. Prof Sim, please. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ruben Nicholas, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I think uh, our prospective students, our audience today will very, very much like to hear from you. So maybe as a start, I'll just uh, invite each of you to share a little bit about yourself. Uh, Nicholas, uh, perhaps you can tell us about your uh, head wellness ambassador. What is that and, and, and what do you do there? Well, to put it in context, uh, every faculty in the own sense has their own wellness division. For me, I'm in charge of CDE, College of Engineering. So anyone who's going to CDE, my so-called CCA, we plan wellness or mental events just to help students relax. Because believe me, when I say as a student, yeah, you're going to want to have a day off or an event <laughs> off just to relax throughout your semester. So as I would say, most of the time, many of us feel pressured purely coming just to uni every single month, every single semester, it gets taxing on your body, on your mind, whatever have you. I'm here, or rather my group is here, to help facilitate at least a break. A physical hike, it could be art jamming, it could be art appreciation, music appreciation wow. even, cooking events, we all do these things across the semester. So it's just to facilitate students having that slight break. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, so, so it's, it's not, it's basically to help people relax, right? Honestly, okay. the simplest way, yeah. Relax. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we are all, uh, very stressed these days. Okay. Not just for students, but for profs as well. <laughs> uh, we work hard and we, and I know we work our students very hard. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Ruben, uh, I think our audience here will very much, uh, be interested in your stay at Raffles Hall, right? Please, uh, share with us about that. Yeah, thank you. So for me, yeah, as mentioned in the introduction, I stayed in Raffles Hall for the first two years of my university life. Yeah, so for me, I felt it was very enriching because I feel like the, the student life in Hall is going to be very vibrant. Yeah, so for me, as mentioned, so I mainly had two, four CCAs in, throughout my two years. Yeah, so I was very heavily involved in being part of two music bands in mm. my, yeah, in my, my two years there. 
Yeah. So over there, I was mainly playing the keyboard for my music band. Yeah. And I think it exposed me to learn many different skill sets that I never thought I would learn. So for example, like even though I was playing the keyboard, I think throughout my time here, I've been inspired to pick up like a new instrument. Yeah. So for me, over summer, mm. I'm trying to learn the drums right now. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So wow. I'll say your, your time in, in hall exposes you to many new like skill sets or interests that you never thought you would try. Yeah. And for me, I was also in a road release CCA as well as being part of the Ultimate Frisbee team. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so Raffles Hall, would you say, uh, what's the character like? Is it is it more for music because you, you mentioned picking up music, or is it about ultimate? Fit? I mean, what what? How would you how would you characterize Raffles Hall uh, versus the other uh, uh hostels? Yeah. So normally Raffles Hall, we pride ourselves in our culture based CCAs. So maybe mm. our music scene as well as like other CCAs such as our dance. Yeah, and other like different culture CCA such as like we have a awesome uh orchestra ensemble like CCA yeah and we really okay. pack ourselves in this these few CCAs yeah so it depends on your your interest because normally different halls they also pride themselves on many different things so from what I know so for example Temasek and Yusuf Hall they normally pride themselves on their their sports culture yeah because they are very heavily involved in in their sports CCAs. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's Tamasek Hall. But Raffles is more uh towards music performing arts, uh yeah. that kind of thing. Cool, cool. Okay, that's great. Uh so let let let's uh go to the QA, right? I think uh you can also see the uh the QA box and the kind of questions. Uh so one a question caught my eye, right? Uh this is a question uh from Shane, I, I believe I, I may not be pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, the question is, do the rankings of our choices for application to our course of choice matter? Uh, I.e., am I more likely to be offered my first ranked choice? Okay, so let me quickly answer that and then I'll get the two of you gentlemen to, to share what you did. Okay, so the answer is yes, your choices, uh, the ranking uh does matter because we have this thing called the first choice bonus points, okay? So in other words, when you um, uh, apply, whatever you put as your first choice, you get a few more points uh, in terms of your UAS, right? You may have heard of this UAS, uh, University Admission Score. Um, so that, that gets bumped up a little bit. You get a little bit bonus only for your first choice, okay? You are given eight choices in total, Okay, this bonus only applies to what you put down in your first choice. Okay, so that uh, gives you an edge over somebody who puts the same major perhaps in their second choice. Okay, so in other words, you do get an advantage. Uh, and we want to do that because we want students to seriously think carefully what your first choice is. Okay, so that's the short answer. But I think right now I want to throw it back to the two. Gentlemen here, if you can remember, I know this is some time ago for you, when you when you uh, applied to NUS, uh, how did you go about ranking your choices, right? And and yeah, tell us about that. Anyone can start. Ruben, you first or shall I go? I can go first. Yeah, so for me, I think I had the, like, because in, in Singapore, we have national service. So I had like an, an additional two years to think about like specifically what I want to major in, in university. So I thought that was a good time for me to, to decide what my first choice would be, which was to major in pharmaceutical science. Yeah, so I would say like this time would be a, a very good time like to, like before your applications to decide on what specifically you want to pursue in the future. Yeah, and to discover your passions. Yeah, so for me, like I managed to use that time during my national service to fully decide on what exactly I wanted to pursue in the future. Yeah, so I think knowing your first choice would be, would be helpful. Yeah, as it help, it does like help you in your applications by putting your, the major that you want to pursue as your first choice. Yeah. Okay, okay. So did you put pharmaceutical science as your first choice? Yes, I put it as my first choice. Yeah. I see, okay. And I think you also mentioned that because of NS, you actually 
could have two more opportunities to to apply, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess that's that's for for the for the boys in this audience, right? If you have NS, uh, you can apply immediately after your A levels. Uh, uh, once you get offered, we will hold the place for you, right? But during your national service, you can apply again, right? And uh, did you do that, Ruben or Nicholas? Did you well, apply I again? I did it in the very last moment. <laughs> I applied my last slot. I got overconfident, so I can't say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, Nicholas, so did you also uh, put down uh, your major, the, your current major as your first choice? I know you're doing project and facilities management. Mm. It was, uh, it, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It was, yes, it was my first choice. Uh, it was next to psychology and business administration. Ah. So I would say for the sole fact, I was a special case because PFM was phased out into infrastructure project management, the newer version of my course. Mm. So anyone who is looking to come to CDE, IPM, you guys will by default be going to infrastructure project management. My case was slightly different because I could choose between the two differences. Mm. Either graduating with a degree in science, specifically PFM, mm. or engineering, which is IPM. So mm. it was a little iffy when I came, but now it's much more straight, like, straightforward. Mm, I see. Um, well, under uh, CDE now, which is which is where you're from, um, it's it's a it's a common admissions, right? In the sense that you just when you apply, you just tick I want CDE, and then you can indicate your preferred major. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in other words, uh, and 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 is that what you did when you applied? Yes, exactly that. It was exactly that at the moment. Okay, okay. And were you, was there any interview for your major? Uh... For what I understood, my peers went through the interview process. Many of them did, but in my case, I didn't. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, I believe it was because of my A-level score or my holistic perspective or whatever I have it, but I didn't go through it. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, so that's important for our audience to know, right? Uh, Interview, selection interview is, is not mandatory. Okay, it varies. Well, let me put it this way. It's mandatory for certain courses, but not for others. Okay. Uh it is discretionary for some of the other, for most of the courses, in fact. Okay. So things like medicine, dentistry, nursing, yes, it's mandatory. They will call you up for an interview, they will call you up for a selection test. Okay. But in say uh project facilities management. Uh, it's not compulsory, and but you may still be asked to come for an interview, right? The idea is uh, again to to uh, assess you beyond your your grades. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. Okay, uh, let me. There was another question that caught my eye. Ah, yes, yes. This is one by Sophie, which uh, who is asking. Uh, hi, taking multiple CCAs. Is it a requirement to be allowed to stay in hostel? Okay, it must have been quite difficult to balance both a social hostel life and academic requirement. How did you do this? Uh, I guess this question uh, is for Ruben, right? Ruben, you stayed in, in Raffles Hall. Uh, yeah, can you, can you answer that, please? Sure, yeah. So in general, I would say this uh, idea about like having multiple CCAs, it generally is only applicable to hostels, so for the different house in NUS. And I would say it's true to a certain degree. Yeah, so I think different halls, they mandate it differently. So I'll just speak on behalf for, for my hall, Raffles Hall. Yeah, so for me, like, generally, the minimum CCA requirements in hall is, for Raffles Hall, is to have four CCAs. Yeah. So wow. generally, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite heavy. Yeah, so like for me, that's why I was in my two music bands, my road relay and my free speed team. Yeah, so in terms of commitment, I would say definitely it does it does take up a lot of your time when you when you commit to this like CCAs. Yeah. But for me, I would say it was a very enjoyable thing because it was a it was a way for me to like, get away from, from academics and to okay. really meet new people as well as to to um, train or like pursue any interest that you are that you want that you can pursue in hall, yeah. Wow. And in terms of balancing your 
your CCAs along with your academics, I would say it's definitely possible. Yeah. I would say it definitely it definitely drains a lot of your time. Yeah. So def definitely you have to balance out your your timetable very well. And I think by the same time, I think this is the same thing as like Prof uh Terence mentioned just now. Like so basically your university life is very customizable. Yeah. So for me, like for me, I will focus a lot on doing my as much academic work as I could in the afternoon during the day. Where in the evening, I can focus a lot more on my four CCAs. Yeah. So in the case, I tried my best to balance out both worlds to the best I can. Yeah. Right. Right. That that is uh, that is quite demanding, right, for CCAs. But as you said, if you're doing something that you enjoy, uh, I think I think that that goes a long way. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh. Nicholas, would you like to share anything with regards to CCA? I would say with NUS, I think Prof. Sim also mentioned that we have over 200 CCAs. That is something for everyone. You just have to be willing to put yourself out there and try it. Because many people, many of the times, even after first admissions, we get this question a lot. What is the social life like? How is student life like? Are students friendly? Can I make friends? My honest process is go and try. You will never know until you go and put yourself in their shoes, try CCA, you know, rock climbing, you become wellness ambassadors. Try the CCAs out. We have something for everybody. You want to make friends? The avenue is there. Do mm. not worry about, can I do this? Can I do that? No. NUS is here to purely facilitate students trying things out. We want you to have fun. I, or in my perspective, I want to have fun. The CCA for it. Go for it. Try it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Good, good. Good advice there. Good advice. Thanks for sharing. Okay. I Another question just caught my eye. This is from Yana Doshi. Uh, and uh, the question is, what is the everyday NUS student life like? Okay, what is, your, what is the student culture there? Are you closer to those who live in the same halls as you or closer to those in your course? I think, I think that's a very uh, relevant question. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, feel free to share. What, what, what is your typical day like? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. For, I would say for CDE, or rather my case, anyways, it's good. It says that you have your tutorial slot and your lecture slots separate most of the time. Most majors, this and that. When that happens, as incoming students, please go and find out how much time you have in between your lectures, your lessons, all that. Lessons are lessons. You're going to have to make friends. You're going to enjoy your friends in your course. But to do that, you're going to have to meet your friends, right? I would say go for orientation camps. All ah. these things are where you facilitate, you build off those friendships from the very get-go. Because in your lessons, it's kind of tough. I won't deny that. Apart from your projects or, say, your random interaction with the person on your left or your right. Orientation camps is the best way to meet your friends in your course and enjoy it. Halls, mm. sorry, I don't stay in hall. I can't say anything. Ruben, that's on you. <laughs> but your day-to-day, -day, because you are able to customize your lecture tutorial slots, you have the time to do what you have to do. You want to mm. study in the day, go for it. You want to part-time elsewhere in the evening, you can do all these things. It is how you want to make it. I will mm. say that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ruben, uh, please uh, share your, your typical day and whether you are closer to people in your hall or in your course? Oh, okay. Maybe for me, my perspective is slightly different. Yeah, course based for pharmaceutical science, it's a very small course. Yeah, so my batch, my batch size is around 65 students only. Mm. And in pharmaceutical science, we have a fixed curriculum. Yeah, so we all attend the same lectures and same tutorials together. Yeah, so basically, I see my friends like every, almost every single day. Yeah, the same people. Mm -mm -mm. So I think that's a, in a sense, it's a good thing because you get to bond closer with the same people, yeah, and you get a lot of chance to interact with your your friends from the same course as you, yeah. Mm. And mm. for me, I I can't say spec like, uh, whether I'm closer to to like people in my course or in my hall. I would say generally it's about the same, yeah, because I would say generally I spend the same amount of time in hall as with my my course, yeah. Mm. So overall, I'm uh, I would say it's close to everyone. But I also mm. know that you know, everyone's like, experiences will be different. Yeah, maybe 
some people will, will prioritize staying are uh, focusing on their their major or academic related okay. stuff more compared to, to staying in hall. So, so in that case, we naturally be more closer to, to people in your course. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, because you get to choose like who you want, what you want to do in your student life. Yeah. Right. So let me let me just clarify. In your hall, Raffles Hall, uh the people there are from different majors, right? Yes, a lot of them are from different majors. Ah, okay. So I think that that that's also interesting because uh that's where because if if you're just interacting with people in your major, then it, it's kind of very silo, right? But because you live in a hall, uh, you have people from different majors, and that that must be an enriching experience as well. Yeah. Okay. Also, one of my like favorite conversations is like sharing with my friends about like our own like academic workload. Yeah, and about our studies in general and what we are doing in our student lives. Yeah, I mm. thought it was very enriching to to find out more about what like my friends are doing in their respective majors. Like for example, psychology in the life mm. sciences. Yeah, in business, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's very good. Uh there's a quick follow up question, right? Uh, which is what are the requirements to apply for the hostel? This is by Chandrawati Kurniawan. Okay. What are the requirements to apply for hostels? Since we're talking about hostels, um, uh, Ruben, do you recall what 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 were the requirements then? Mm, wow. Okay. Regarding the application window, this one I'm not too sure. But from what I can remember, normally for your hostel applications, they will, I would say, it's quite similar to applications to NUS in the sense where they ask you to list like. For example, different achievements that you have done that are outside of academics. Yeah, so maybe like your things you have done in, in sports or maybe personal projects that you have done in the past. Yeah, I think these are some things that they are looking for when it comes mm. to applications. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good to know. Thank you. Thank you. And generally, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Uh basically different halls, they have their own uh engagement camps yeah so you can look out for those those uh sign up sign up periods for these engagement camps yeah so basically these engagement camps are a way for you to to join the, the hall for a few days and to see how hall life is like yeah i would say it's, it's a very fun time for for prospective students to to find out more about how hall life is for them yeah mm, good 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 okay now, in, in the final minutes, maybe I'll take uh, one or two more questions. Uh, here's a question uh, from Yana Doshi. Uh, do you have any opportunities for internships during your years at NUS? Did you ever go overseas for exchange as well? And if so, what did you do there? Uh, do you think internships and exchange helped you to be more sure of your choices? So let me quickly handle the easy part, right? The easy part is that Internships are compulsory for certain majors, but not for others. Okay, so for example, uh, for computing, right, where I'm from, uh, yes, uh, you have to do uh, six months of internships, which can be broken up into three months, three months. Okay, uh, so for computing students, yes, internship is uh, mandatory. But uh, for you, Ruben and uh, Nicholas, was internship compulsory for you and why did you go for what you did? Uh, please share with us. For my major, it's actually not compulsory. But for mm -hmm. the newer version IPM, yes, it is. Industrial oh, attachment. That's why it's called IA, Industrial Attachment. But okay. I still did an internship purely to like what Yana mentioned in the question. Yeah, it was to be more sure of my choice. Because at the end of the day, you are signing up for your degree. It could be three to four years. I personally don't want to be in the end of the stage when I graduate. Like, oh, do I really... Do I really mm. want to be stuck in the industry? I that's see, stress see. of it. So mm, mm, mm. I would say throw yourself in as soon as you can. If the opportunity arises earlier, year two, one, year two, whatever have you, do it. Do as many as you can to understand the industry you're in. To familiarize yourself, to understand yourself even as a person. If you do like it. If you don't like it, find something else. <laughs> to some degree. But the sooner you do it, the better. The more you do it, even more so. I see. I see. Okay, that's good to know. So you use internships to sort of validate your choice of your major. Right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. That that that's a very good point. 
because it's one thing to be studying in the classroom. It's another thing to see, hey, what's it like in the in real reality. world? Yeah, 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 yeah. What about you, Ruben? Uh, you have done internships as well. Uh, share with us, uh, you know, your experience and, and so on. Yeah, so for me, like as a pharmaceutical science major, like because we are under, my, my, it's a science degree. So for us, I believe for, also for most majors in under the CHS program, most uh, internships are not necessary like as mm. a requirement for graduation. Yeah, mm. so for me, I can speak for like the science degrees. So for us, mainly we normally have to uh, fulfill one of the three requirements. So one would be an internship. Second would be a final year project or FIP for short. And mm. third would be a research project under a professor. Yeah. Okay. So as you fulfill one of the three requirements, then you are able to graduate from. It's a graduating requirement from from NUS. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but was, you, yeah, you chose internship, and in fact, you're you're about to do a second one. Yeah, tell us about that. Yes. Yeah. Because for me, like for me, I would say your summer breaks, your summer vacation, which is where I, me and Nicholas are at right now, which is ending in a few weeks. Yeah. I would say this period, because it's around a three months uh, break from school, I would say it's a good time for me to explore different interests that I, I want. Yeah, hence, I decided to pursue an internship during this summer vacation. Yeah, mm. So I'm pursuing an internship at GSK, which is a pharmaceutical company, where I'm mm. learning more about the like, quality profet, uh, processes when it comes to manufacturing different drugs. Yeah. So I would say it's a like what Nicholas mentioned. I think internships is a very good time for you to, to like explore your different potential career interests. Yeah, mm. because you learn things that you like and things that you don't like. Yeah, I think it's it's good because a lot of things that you learn in the workplace may, like you won't necessarily learn the same skill sets in in school. Yeah, yeah. so it's to to go out there and okay. explore. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think I think for both of you, uh, if I may summarize, both of you are very intentional to select an internship that aligns with your major, right? Uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense, okay? Because you 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 could do an internship in outside of your major as well, right? Uh, and and I'm sure some people have done that, but I think uh, the point is you want to see how your major is being actually used and applied in in the real world. So I think it reinforces. Uh, what you learn in the classroom also validates your choice, right? So, so thank you for sharing. So, um, in the I think I think unfortunately that's all the time we have. It's I see the clock. It's already ten o'clock, and I know that there are many other faculty talks lined up for you today. In fact, there's one starting right after this, right? So I don't want to hold the audience back because some of them will be going for the other talks as well. So, uh, let me just uh, thank uh, Ruben and Nicholas for your excellent sharing, very spontaneous, yeah, good job. And I think the students, the, the, the audience here really benefited from that. So let me uh, just uh, end this sharing session right now. Yeah, over to you, uh, Yujia. Thank you, Prof Sim and students for sharing your experiences, insights and sound advice. I hope they have managed to answer your questions and clarify your doubts. With that, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope that this session has been helpful. We know that many of you have signed up for the respective sharing sessions for the rest of the day and we wish you a fruitful time gathering insights about the transformative experiences and endless opportunities that await you at NUS. We also greatly appreciate if you could take a few minutes to fill up a feedback form. You may scan the QR code or assess the link on the screen. Your feedback is important to us. Please let us know how we can improve. Thank you once again. We look forward to receiving your application and warmly welcoming you to NUS. Have a pleasant day ahead.